All right. Hello there. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Nice to see you. Welcome to another edition of uh, Last Call with Reunion. Last Call. Today we're, we're starting like we start every episode, beer. With beer. Today we have Lawson's Finest Liquids, Sip of Sunshine. Classic. So this we, is, We've mentioned them a couple times already. This is one of the uh, pioneers of the IPA style, uh, the craft IPA style, and um, they were doing it. This was a hugely popular beer four years ago, maybe five years ago. Yeah, it was insane. Long. Yep, people lines outside the brewery. Yeah, it was one of they. They were definitely one of the ones that people were clamoring yeah. for, and uh, rightly so because every time I've ever tasted it, it it uh, it hits everywhere it's supposed to. Yep, they've recently expanded. They uh, last summer, I believe, they built out their brewery, their tasting room. Was it? Is that what happened, or did they? And they also might have picked up a second. A second. Well, Fiddlehead picked up a second distillery. Lawson's expanded their brewery and their tasting room. Yep. And these guys, this is like a West Coast IPA, right? Yeah. You should yeah, be looking when, at uh, comments. Oh, that's right. The, um, Thank you. That's yeah, what I'm, so like, I'm when, like, this is going too quick. What am I not doing that I normally do? When the East Coast breweries first started making craft beer, it sweet. wasn't, it wasn't uh, New England IPA. It was a West Coast style. Yeah. Clear, a little clearer, not cloudy, uh, a little more bitter hops. It, Something it, like Stone was doing yeah. or Dogfish Head. Lupulin, uh, Lup I guess Lupulin is the name of like the, the style or whatever they, the hop that they mm -hmm. add. And so anytime you see that in the description of the hops, know that it's probably going to be a West Coast style yeah. IPA. Lup how do you say it? Lupulin? I believe Lupulin. it's Lupulin. That's how Lupulin. I read it. L-U-P-U-L-I-N. All right. You've got the, um, the bitters that tighten up your tongue. Yep. Cheers. 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 I hope you guys have a drink with us. Yeah. That should be the, the plan, by the way. Yeah, bring a beer. You should always bring, bring a, a beer and maybe even a shot, but that's just my <laughs> one guy's opinion in case we have any sort of drinking games. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, so like you said, it, there's that that bitter finish at the end. Yeah. Um, but that's what the style was known for, right? Mm -hmm. Like this was, it, it's crisp, it's clean, refreshing. And then it's just that if you, if you like that back bitterness at the end, it this sticks is a around. beer for you. Yeah, it does. And so it's probably like a good beer to have with some food. Yeah, and, to and me, this is like it's not um, traditional, like not that it's not traditional IPA, but lately I feel like every IPA I've been having, it seems like uh, maybe because we're doing a lot of double IPAs and things of that sort, but yeah. this is like it's very crisp for an IPA. It doesn't Absolutely. have a lot of like floral stuff it's just kind of like i feel like it's perfect for food kind of like when we were talking about with wine how it, there's some of the brightness in it i think something a little spicy maybe mm -hmm. would go really well with this absolutely this one guy's opinion well right now we have something very similar like that in front of us so uh today we're doing our second food review uh, uh of something we're going to try a brand new menu item something that we added to the menu this weekend um it is uh our boneless chicken wings they're fried crisp Perfectly, and they are doused in our honey hot sauce or our hot honey sauce. Hot honey right. sauce what are we calling it? Honey, honey, honey hot. Honey honey these hot. are honey hots. So these are honey hots, like you read about. Fantastic. I'm gonna grab some plates. We use uh, Mike's Hot Honey. So if you're not familiar with Mike's Hot Honey, it's in some supermarkets. Uh, I think we Whole Foods and some others. But it's uh, it's a local organic honey that uh, he adds a proprietary spice blend to, and then it's our Buffy Q sauce. So it's. Hot honey bar, hot honey, Mike's hot honey, and our barbecue sauce. And the thing I love about our boneless uh, tenders is um, so many places that I've worked in my lifetime. When they do boneless tenders, they're just somebody's reaching into the freezer and grabbing the pre-breaded, just boneless thing that you yeah, find. Yeah, same and, stuff you buy at home. Which is, you know, absolutely nothing wrong. Yeah, it's fine. But these, when we're butchering our chickens for our chicken our dish, because yeah. we break them down from whole chickens, and we've got the tenders. Are leftover. left over, and uh, well, they're not left over. They're made for this, but it's you know, I love I love the fact that our guys are butchering them in agree. the basement. Where yeah, uh, three in or the four prep kitchen, I should these. say, I, I our basement's a prep kitchen. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. And so, you know, we got John. He's saying he likes the garlic parm. So yeah. I'm glad you said that, John, because you can get this in barbecue, buffalo, garlic parm. You can get them plain, and now we have them in this uh, the honey, honey hot, honey, honey hot, honey, honey hot. hot. They're um. They're pretty spectacular. <laughs> it's a, it's a flavor. Um, I mean, Mike's hot honey alone worth getting. 
Absolutely. Just put it on anything. Waffles, biscuits, a sandwich. Yeah, it's great. So I'm going to do a little dip here. Oh, mm. And it sticks around a little bit. It's got a little heat that hangs. Now you can also... <laughs> We're live, everybody. We are live. So we're, we were giving Sargon a lesson on how to use utensils earlier. Uh, we thought he had I didn't realize Jake was a barber. Now remember, to hold the knife. With, oh, you got it. Perfect. Right. <laughs> You're very good. Love the sauce. Mm. Oh, man. Grab that phone. All right, get the phone. Yeah. Honey, honey Hot Sauce was my nickname in high school, Gary. We've, we've talked about it. <laughs> yeah, Gary Benacusa. Yep. So, I think. You're good. I got finished. Yeah, I got finished. Either. So, the best part about this, oh man, that is so good. Yeah, it's great sauce. A little bit of that, that obviously the honey, that sweet that's in there. Yep. The spicy, it doesn't overwhelm the honey. No. Nope. It's like a perfect marriage. The sip of the beer, and it just, it literally opens up all the flavors in this. Mm -hmm. This is like a perfect meal. Like, or even if you want to get it as an appetizer, I would eat this as a meal. Absolutely. In the summertime, with a few beers, out sitting outside, or... Yeah. If you like, if perfect. you like uh, spicy hot chicken, I mean, this is like Nashville hot, with some sweet in it. It's got the cayenne, got the pepper backbone, sweet, hand-breaded. Oh my god! I'm gonna, I gotta go in for one more. Sorry. I mean, who I'm doesn't like fried chicken, right? If you, if you eat chicken, you like fried chicken. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yay! Awesome. All right. Honey hots. Honey hots. Honey hots. And um, how much are they? Uh, that's a very good question. Nine bucks. Nine bucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are nine bucks. Yep. And, and, and then we we'll do the same sauce on bone in as well. Yep. So right. So you can get that on bone in or boneless. And the options right online. Right online. Yeah. The choices. And they're the same price. Yep. Bone in or boneless. Mm hmm. Awesome. I love it. I just think you can get really creative with uh, with wings these days. And I think. I mean, there's whole chains created around it, right? Exactly. I mean, Hooters has made a career out of it. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Over Worcester. I mean, there's yeah. a million wing places. Comment, Wick, Wicked Wings. Comment with your favorite sauce, too, option. If yeah. there's something that we don't have or something you'd like to see on the menu for in terms of a sauce for a wing, let us know. Reach out. This is what we're doing this for. It's an easy way to talk or communicate with our customers. So, Yep. You can get these, order online, call, they're fantastic. Awesome. So yesterday was uh, Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, but so what's, what makes today? So today is, well, it's Revenge of the Sixth. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we had May the 4th, Cinco de Mayo, and Revenge of the Sixth. Uh, nowhere near as good as uh, the original Star Wars movies, but <laughs> good enough for, for us to uh, make it a drink. Uh, conversation around it so uh, typically in my history uh may the 5th uh, I, I i like to imbibe a little yes um yeah it's a big drinking day as we all yeah. know so uh historically the sixth uh there's a bit of a recovery situation happening <laughs> always uh a little hair of the dog yeah so you know there's there's in my opinion there's about four or five drinks that are what i like to call hangover helpers no question. And um, today I'm going to make my favorite of those, which is called the michelada. One of my favorites too. I like to, uh, you know, I like to kind of stick with the Mexican theme because we're still doing the Cinco de Mayo. Uh, my assumption is that a lot of uh, our friends uh, that are celebrating in Mexico are drinking micheladas this morning. And micheladas, <laughs> that's a beer cocktail, right? Yeah. It is. Which is like. So it's basically like a. So what, what are your five? I, I've got Bloody Mary, okay. Mimosa, yep. Michelada. Yep. Um, I think just beer. Yeah. In, in rare instances, a shot of something. Maybe like a pickle back. Yeah, pickle back. Right, so if, like you can hold it down. pickle back. <laughs> if you can hold it so down. If you can, if, you're, if you're at the point where you can stomach it, they, the hair of the dog is a thing. You know, you, you feel, follow up the next morning with a little bit of whatever you have there. <laughs> Sorry, we are God. Are God. <laughs> But a michelada is great. One of the reasons I like the michelada is because it's not hard liquor. Yep, yep. So, um, you know, Bloody Mary can be great, but with the acid and the vodka, it can be a little intense. You gotta, yeah, you got to be in the right mood yeah. for that. Because you're either, if you're, if you're way, I mean, for me anyway, if I'm way, way too hungover, I'm not even looking at any of this stuff. Yeah. But if I'm like, 
just the right amount, and I I, fe- I know that another drink might you know mm-hmm. take the edge off a little bit. Bloody Mary is my go-to, always, yes. always, always. But I'm very curious. Uh, my, uh, I got to be honest. I haven't had too many micheladas in my yeah. life. Perfect. So, well, it couldn't be easier. That's one of the reasons I like Perfect. it because when I, you know, when you're in that moment, you don't want to be thinking a lot. You're not looking at your recipe books. No, nope. <laughs> you just want to nope. just get it in. Just get it in. Um, so let's just. I'll just go into it. So basically, like these guys said, it's a beer-based cocktail. We'll build it in the glass. Again, you can build it right in the glass, like which I love. And um, basically, your base is going to be a pilsner of some sort. Typically, some, Mexican beer. If you can, if you got one of these Coronas around, you're in good. You're right in behind good hands. you. Um, I knew I pulled one of these out. Uh, so, beer over ice. Over ice, about that much, up to about here. Right? Yeah, about half the beer, give or take, not quite. Then, whatever thing, whatever you can handle spicy, if you feel comfortable with it. It needs a dash like, of something. It needs something. So, so that's I've habanero. A little habanero, I'm going to go with that. We've Ooh, got, dash. we love the Tabasco sauces. We have the regular Tabasco. We have mm-hmm. the chipotle. We have the green jalapeno. I'm going with a little bit of all of it, but just because I'm a little bit of a masochist when it comes to this stuff. This is a dash here and there. This is the, what is this one? The green one? That's the green jalapeno. Green jalapeno, jalapeno and chipotle, chipotle, why not? Sure. Put chipotle too. To right? Now traditionally in Mexico, it's it's usually clamato. Right. But you can also use tomato juice. And then uh, I actually also like to put a little salt and pepper in mine. Mm-hmm. Just dash oh, each. Wait, wait, what's clamato? So clamato is tomato juice mixed with clam juice. Aha, uh-huh, okay. It's literally That's why I never heard of it. It's when they be. shut clams from mass production. <laughs> it sounds disgusting. Because it sounds disgusting. It's, but it's, it's, it's the secret ingredient ingredient in a lot of incredible uh, Bloody yeah. Mary stuff. Okay. Well, and you can buy it, it at like some Caesar. shop or whatever. It's not a... It's a oh, yeah. It's, really? it's, it's, a, not a it's a kind thing. of a short stout bottle with a blue label usually. Got it. Um, but you see it everywhere. It's in all supermarkets. Um, and we're doing strictly tomato juice. We're just going with tomato juice today. And if you're making a Bloody Mary with it, it's called actually a Bloody Roman, not a Bloody Mark Mary. Got it. So and, um, clam, clam juice. Sometimes I like to throw a little Tabasco or a little uh, Worcestershire sauce or maybe a little soy sauce sure. in there. I wasn't really feeling it. Yeah, not traditionally Mexican, though. That's, right. The Mexican recipe is almost like clamato, dash of hot sauce, and beer. Now, this has carbonation in it. So like yep. we've talked about before, the no shaking, yep. but you got to give it a, a stir to get all those hot sauces. So we're going to flip yep. it. So, so we're just going to give it. it a nice light flip, and then I'm going to rim the glass. glass rim the glass with a little chili salt. So it's chili powder. It's three different chili powders mixed with salt. So, which by the way, is a great rim for Bloody Mary as well. Yep. Anything we're doing here can be done with the Bloody Mary. You can. Top it with a piece of celery. You can top it with a hot pepper. Um, just garnish it with a lime or lemon. Uh, it's it's a little sweeter than a Bloody Mary, which once you get used to it, is a wonderful thing. Because um, it's missing the heat of the vodka. I'm just gonna go with this. Yeah, yeah, just keep going. Keep making them. So that's how they're made. Super simple. Um, Called a michelada. These are for me. I love the times I've had the best luck with these is on planes. You're like right. flying home from somewhere after the night before, a little bit. Like vacation, flying home. And they, they always have Miss T's. Mrs. T's, Bloody Mary mix on the plane. Super you salty. Beer. You don't need any of this other stuff there because Mrs. Mrs. T's just has a lot of salt to it. it, salt and everything as well. Um, but it's like for me, I, I've always had. It's like a tradition for me. Pop yep. on, grab it, make yourself a up. Awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm excited. I mean, like I said, uh, now, is it traditionally Corona, or are we just, did we pick no, Corona? It's, it's usually a Mexican beer. Okay. Uh, but it could be any of them. could be I'm Modelo. A Pacifico fan. Pacifico is a good one. Um, El Presidente. Yep. Usually a lighter one. It's not, typically not a dark beer. Nice. It's usually a light Mexican beer. But I'm still enjoying my sip of sunshine, man. I, I love, I'm, I'm, now, one of these typically, forever. I would say I don't drink these at 8 o'clock at night. This would typically more, been more like this morning. Yep, yep. This would have been something for breakfast. <laughs> this and some uh, huevos rancheros. Perfect. You're good. A nice little brunch drink going yeah. on. And you see, 
see, it's not a ton of beer, right? We made, no, it's, we made three of these out of one beer. Yeah, it's... So you're just getting a little edge in there. So it's not even that, there's not even, it's not a huge alcoholic drink. No, either. not at all. But it's just it enough It rehydrates to, you. Just yep. enough to get the, the, the spices, I think, get your blood flowing a little bit. It's got vegetables, got Get some electrolytes, got some salt. <laughs> exactly. Little, lots of water, so like you're getting rehydrated. Yeah. I mean, dehydration is the number one cause of hangover, right? So yeah, so this drink, will help out a little drink bit. Fluids. I mean, water might be better. Let's not, you know, mis water mislead water. anyone, but uh, this I'm will gonna, this, gonna, this can't gonna, hurt too much. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, like, that might be better is the the, the, the key word there. Now, so this is quicker. Typically, mm -hmm. for me, if a drink has a fruit on it, I squeeze it in because that yep. somebody meant for you to have it in there. Yep, I agree with that. I like the lemon, lemon in there. And if I'm sure that it's clean, I drop it right in my drink. Me too. If I'm not... I throw that shit right away. <laughs> <laughs> so, you like somehow the, the inside of it's cleaner than the outside, you know? And, and, I don't true. Know. And this is typically drink with a straw? Or yeah. are we going right off out of the rim? How are we doing that? Yeah, so I'm, I'm one where I like to take a little bit of the, a, like a lick of the, of the, right rim, the rim and then I suck it up the rest out of the straw. Excuse me. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Come back, come back. Uh, oh, what did we do last time? Arriba, uh, yeah. Abajo, Arriba, Abajo, El Centro. El Centro. Held down. Held down and we actually were corrected. We had it off by one word, I believe. Pod or something like that. Like for the mouth. Oh, really? For, for the mouth, not. Oh, not, pod not, <laughs> Yeah. Did someone, something like someone that. Someone corrected us? Yeah. I know. I, I had seen it somewhere else, oh. I swear. Afterwards. So, and again, no cultural, no cultural appropriation. We want to do it right if we're going to do it. Yeah, exactly. It's just it's exactly. not a joke. It's real. So, um, it's great. Super light and refreshing. This is actually super refreshing. Right. Um, Surprisingly, I, right? I like everything about it. It doesn't everything. look like it should be this yeah. way. And there, there's an American drink, something similar, called a Bloody Bowl. Right. Or a Red is, Eye. Or a Red Eye. So. Which is half a beer, half tomato juice. Right. This is just um, with some of the spices in it. We spice it up a little bit. Exactly. Lime, so, lemon. Whereas yeah, the American Sean and one, I have a friend that owns a restaurant, Marlboro, called the Tapatio. Yep. yep. And, Great uh, Mexican restaurant. Fantastic re Mexican restaurant. Where is it's, it? Marlboro? It's on Route 20 where the old Bertucci's old used Bertucci's. to be. Got on it. On the Sudbury line there. And um, he was originally... Had a different location in Marlboro, and then moved to this new, bigger Upon location. Friendship. And um, the first time, first or second time we went there, Sean and I went for lunch yep. on like a Thursday afternoon. And the seat, the bar only has like eight seats, and there are eight guys there who didn't speak any English. So there, were, I knew it was going to be All nice, which typically for me, if I go into a place that's supposed to be Mexican and everybody there is Mexican. I have a Perfect. feeling it's going to be good food. Yeah. Like, I don't know why that is. I just assume, like, just if that's where they come because they know it's, like, homemade, you know? No question. And they were all drinking these. So we said, what are these what guys the, drinking? What are those? <laughs> and uh, they made it for us. And I got hooked. I, I might prefer this over a Bloody Mary now. They're super easy to drink. Super easy. And you can make them like a Bloody Mary. You can put anything you want in here. You can put a horseradish in here. You can turn it into a Bloody Mary. It's just basically beer substituted for the vodka. So, um... Uh, Leslie Briggs, who is uh, well, that's perfect. Because I was just thinking about that's my mom right there. Well, she said Hi, she's saying add this to your brunch menu. So I think we that's had. A great, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, a great good idea. idea. If that. But that's if our that's our mom right there. So and so let's that's a perfect segue. Let's remind Mother's everybody Day. about Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Hi mom, Mother's love you, mom. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. And we're thinking about Mother's Day, like Josh said. Um, we ordered a lot of food. We have some left. Uh, we're going to stop taking orders when it runs out, but we are running out. So um, we've got me. prime call rib left. Call guy back. Yep. <laughs> we got prime rib left. We got turkey left. We got pork tenderloin left. Uh, Brussels sprouts, all the desserts. Yep. Uh, mashed potatoes, most of the sides, stuffing. Um, so so the, this, we week have, this weekend, uh, let, don't let anybody kid you. The weather's going to be awful. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, they're talking about in the 30s at night and possible chance of snow showers. It's May 9th, and we're gonna be, we're talking about snow and cold in, in, hey, in yeah. this area. If it's gonna happen, this is the year for it. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, what else could happen in 2020? But so <laughs> the next, the next, <laughs> careful, I know, right? <laughs> the next day is Mother's Day, the 10th on Sunday. The weather's not looking any better. No one wants to grill. No one wants to, you know. We, we uh, all want to sit there like and, and, and cook. Let us do that for you. Give us a call. You can call anytime. We're here in the early in the morning. Someone will be here to answer your phone call. And um, we take orders all day. Yep. And like Sean said, uh, get in before uh, we run out. Yep. Uh, because slots have filled up for the most part. And uh, yeah, we have a few orders us, left. Right. So you pick a time anywhere from 12 noon to 6.30 p.m. every half hour. 
your food will be ready. Come into our vestibule, foyer, lanai, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, entryway. And the food's ready for you. Come and grab it, Don. We're preparing it. I just thought of a new drinking game. What's Anytime that? Sean says a word we don't understand, we have to we drink. We have to drink. I love it. Lanai. I love it. <laughs> Lanai. <laughs> Cheers. Dad's, my, my father's asking him, how come Josh is uh, wearing a mask and we're not? It's okay. a preference thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, no, well. it's not a preference <laughs> thing. It's not a preference. So I, uh, I self-quarantined for the first 46 days of this. Uh, and this, we were together. And these guys were here uh, doing all the stuff to help keep this place running. And um, so we're, we've uh, been together. They've been together the whole time, and they travel in the same circles, and they have all the same... Re yeah. re and, and we're, we're and, still six-ish feet and, apart. Yeah. And everyone uh, that they interact with is... Uh, that way, but we're also uh, I'm, I've kind of been out of that circle and I want to make sure to stay healthy in case something happens with one of these guys we need, yeah. I gotta be able to jump in yeah. and, I, and have, I have a mask Yeah, so we're all wearing it when we're, we're not open to the public so you can't come in here so right. technically this is like being in our house we don't need the masks in here We, when we go outside, we wear the masks yep. when, I, when I leave the building or if I go out even to the foyer and put the food out there put the mask on Chris, um, Chris made a joke. He was like, well, the snow should at least keep the murder hornets away. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> By 2020, the way, everyone. tomorrow is drink. I'm going to make the murder a hornet. Hornet. The murder, murder hornet. hornet. Let's so go. Be prepared. I don't know what that is yet. I'm going to reach out to some bartender oh, friends. Wait, I'm sure we can come up with something. Right? <laughs> it's got to be as big as a chihuahua, right? It's not these things are massive. I, they, they eat. Uh, small mice and rats, I guess. And they feel, <laughs> something and they, like that. I don't even. It's and ridiculous. it feels like na like nails being driven into your legs if they bite you. Oh my god! And, and that's terrible. But yeah. that's not the real problem. The real no. problem is they destroy honeybees. Right. They eat honeybees. Right. So uh, it, uh, just a few of these can go in and destroy a honeybee hive in a matter of hours, and they just chop all the heads. I off just think it's honeybees. nonsense because Gary and I had a band called Murder Hunt Hornets <laughs> when we were in high school. Remember that, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> So, we, we've enjoyed our drinks, we've talked about Mother's Day at length, we've discussed murder hornets. <laughs> um, I want to end maybe with some positive stuff too, um, and, and just to take it back a little bit. So back in October, um, in November, uh, the three of us, we sat down, we talked about our private dining room, and yep. we were like, this thing is great, I'm, you know, I'm glad we on have paper. a spot, yeah, on paper, I'm glad we have a spot that we can... Uh, people can come and host their baptisms and their bridal showers or whatever private events that they want to have uh, in that room and we can be the host and we loved it. I mean, it was, it was great for what it, what it was. Um, but we realized, you know, the, the parking uh, situation and um, just, it was just a lot of work. I mean, that was its own entity that required a lot of uh, time and effort and we just felt that it, it wasn't uh, being utilized correctly. Exactly. Yeah. And so we, we started brainstorming about what we could do with that room. The extra space. What can we do with extra space? We have a beautiful room in there. Um, and let's, you know, what, can we, what would make sense for us? And immediately, I, you know, I think Sean was actually the one who yep. said, guys, we should just put a huge pizza oven That's in it. there and let's make some pizza. Take it. Brilliant. Love it. Let's do it. When's our last... Uh, Private event, our last private event, March 8th. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> right after March 8th, we're going to hit the ground running. <laughs> and uh, March 8th weekend, I'll still remember it. Uh, it was like, you know, it's Friday, Saturday. Sales were cut in half. People, you know, there was still fear everywhere. Everyone's worried about this coronavirus. That was the and week it happened, yeah. A week later, we were shut down. So it kind of took the wind out of our sails, but we figured now's a good time to announce that we're going to be moving forward with our idea. Uh, we're putting in a pizza oven over there, so hopefully over the summertime to go pizza here at Reunion. Yep. Yeah, there's actually a little bit more to that, actually. Go ahead. We're, we're, what I miss? We're in, in, an ele in an effort to sort of make our carryout um, more accessible and easier to manage as far as the, the no touch and the yeah. personal distancing, we're actually going to be installing some, some take uh, windows. takeout windows over in that room as well, so people will be able to... A order from outside if they want to, or if they're picking up their orders, yep. they'll be able to come and pick up from uh, the different windows, and we'll have everybody socially distanced and safe through the. Uh, yeah, probably so a little PA system so you can wait in your car, or we'll text you. Yeah, you won't even have to come in the building, so which bums us out because we love this building so much. We wish you were all hanging out with us right now. Yeah, yeah. but it's uh, just not the reality. It's just not the reality. 
So yeah, so all our takeout, pizzas, some other cool stuff, um, outdoor access, maybe some ice cream. Yep. And, and it, you know, the pizza that we're going to make is going to be, you know, gourmet. Gourmet um, It's going to be upper echelon, in my opinion. And yeah. I think we already talked about what we want to do and um, seeing the designs, seeing the oven designs. I'm Well, if there's one thing excited. I'm passionate about good pizza. besides Pilsner, <laughs> it's pizza. Probably not in that order. It depends on the week. But uh, pizza is, if it wasn't for pizza, Sean and I, our other company wouldn't exist. Right. We were making pizza in his house when I said, hey, pretzels. we should make pretzels with that dough. We were making, we've been doing this. He and I have been studying the art of pizzas like religiously since I used to work with Petrucci's Corporation. Yes. Which, just coincidentally, so do a lot of our guys in our kitchen have a ton of yeah, pizza we experience. We have Petrucci's some Petrucci's guys. guys and other guys with a lot of brick oven, really traditional pizza makers combined with some of the newer stuff we're going to be trying to do. I really. I'm really excited about this. Absolutely. Yeah, I nice really, uh, we have grown up passionate about pizza. It's my, if I've always said desert island food, hands down, if I'm stuck and I, all I can eat for the rest of my life, I got to pick one thing, it's pizza. Well, we've been discussing <laughs> it for the last seven months. Yeah. And um, it was just one of those things that it's, you know, if, if not now, when, and we're just going to go for it and jump into it. Yeah. And with that said, We've been talking about it for the last seven months. You guys have been living it for, as you said, with, yeah. before the pret pretzel place, when you were working at Bertucci's. This has been, you know, not an idea that was just drawn together yesterday. Yeah. This is something that has been thought about, talked about at nauseum. So uh, yeah. we're super, super, super excited for it. Cannot wait. Um, I know now we're also getting some uh, questions. It's going to be a wood-fired pizza. Yes. It is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Brick oven, wood-fired. Is uh, it going to be gourmet? Yes, gourmet. Yeah, we're talking thin crust, handmade doughs, handmade sauces, really high end um, meats if we can get them. Um, yeah. Cause who knows? <laughs> uh, buffalo mozzarella. We'll, and, and you know, we'll do we'll do specialty pizzas too. Lots of veggie stuff, different cheeses, absolutely. And um, high heat. Also, too, very important uh, comment from Gary. It was murder hornets of death. For the sake of accuracy. Oh, murder hornets of death. That was great. <laughs> MHD is what we call them. That's all our like t-shirts. Like yours, it just said MHD. We were all the rage. We were the like the buzz. That's awesome. <laughs> Pun intended. Yes. <laughs> so, just wanted to leave you guys with that news. Very super excited um, for for pizza here, and then hopefully we have a couple more things up our sleeves, but we don't want to talk about them quite yet. Um, but hopefully we can, you know, if we're trying to figure it out. Yeah, if and when we can open up, I think we have a few ideas, and um, uh, the summer could be fun potentially. Uh, although you know we're going to be 100% safe and following all the precautions necessary, but I think we can have uh, some fun and bring some excitement to the town. So yeah, we want to support the local musicians. We want to be as accessible as possible. We want everyone to feel safe coming here. I mean, we're being told maybe 25% capacity for the first six to eight months, 12 months. That's not a lot of people in here, so we have to be creative and figure out how to make it work. But um, we want you guys to be comfortable to come here. We don't want you to think this is where you come and get exposed to the virus. We want you to think you come here and are safe and can enjoy the food and some space. So we're figuring it out. Awesome. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I'm looking at the sheet. I don't have anything else, really. So, you mm -hmm. know, I think that yeah. this was a good show, guys. Right, cool. Very exciting. And I, I really do like the Michelin. It was very, <laughs> very refreshing. Well, Perfect. I like both of our drinks. Yeah, so Super Sunshine, you can buy. Fabulous. It is on our menu. You can get this to go in cans. Uh, order online. Call us. We'll yeah. take orders. And this guy, you know, buy some beer and make it at home. Josh Couldn't did it. Here. He made three of them in about five minutes. Super easy. It's perfect. So Perfect for uh, Mother's Day morning. Yes. yes. It's a great Put morning. in your orders, please. It's like a Bloody Mary light with yep. a little spice. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, right. guys. See All you right. later. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Good Take night, care. everyone. Bye-bye.